All it takes is one person to really change things up. Who would be your defensive player of the year? Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald. We'll put Aaron up there. Aaron, Aaron Donald. Donald. Aaron Donald is number one. Sometimes all you need is that one individual to turn a team from a loser to a winner. So today, let's take a look at 10 current players who have done epic jobs turning their respective teams around. First up, we have New York Jets cornerback Sauce Gardner. Before joining Robert Sala's group in New York, Sauce played his college ball at the University of Cincinnati, where he was a consensus All-American and led a nasty Cincy defense that became the first group of five school to the college football playoffs. The Jets took him fourth overall, perhaps fondly remembering the days gone by of Revis Island when New York was known for having the best cornerback in the league leading the way. And their decision to take Gardner already seems to be paying dividends. The 6'2-inch cornerback has been rock solid as a rookie. He can hit, he can cover, he can do it all. And he has been an outspoken leader on that defense, which has been huge considering some of the drama that's been swirling around the locker room thanks to Zach Wilson. Unlike many of the other young superstars that have entered the NFL over the past few seasons, Gardner is eager to share the spotlight and always seems to be propping up his teammates whenever he can. While the Jets still have to ultimately figure out the quarterback position, at this point there is no denying that they've built themselves a very strong core of young players. And a lot of the positive momentum that is building around the organization is due to the leader of that pack, Sauce Gardner. It may come as a surprise to some of y'all considering the massive emphasis that is placed on finding a franchise quarterback and building around him and all that, but it's actually not all that uncommon for it to be a guy on the defensive side of the ball that first turns the tides for an organization. Take the Cleveland Browns, for example. Before it all went south for him, Baker Mayfield was given a lot of credit for turning around that franchise and getting them to their first playoff game since 2002. But you know, in many ways, it's actually Miles Garrett who deserves the lion's share of the credit in my opinion. The game-breaking edge rusher was taken first overall in the 2017 draft and has been integral in starting to right the ship in Cleveland. Since entering the league, he's made four Pro Bowls and two All-Pro selections, and though he has missed a little bit of time here and there due to injury, he has been an extremely consistent contributor and frankly, a force to be reckoned with on the defensive line. His relationship with the organization isn't perfect, and it is unclear whether or not he'll stick around long term. But as far as I'm concerned, the Browns fans should forever be indebted to Garrett for what he did to reshape Cleveland's reputation around the league, because before he came to town, they were an absolute laughing stock. This is not too dissimilar to what we've seen play out in Dallas. Granted, the Cowboys weren't in the complete disarray that the Browns were, but I don't think it's unfair to say that they haven't exactly been viewed as a super serious franchise over the past couple of decades. Uh, people love to clown them, and with pretty good reason. After all, it is still Jerry Jones running the show, and despite every flashy offseason acquisition he tries to make, usually on the offensive side of the ball, something always seems to go wrong for Dallas. But all of that seems to be changing thanks to number 11. Micah Parsons. Dallas took Parsons with the 12th overall pick in the 2021 draft, and the former Penn State linebacker has been contributing at a clip that even the most bullish of Cowboy Scouts could not have foreseen. He took home Defensive Rookie of the Year honors in 2021, which I'd suppose shouldn't be a huge surprise, considering he went first team All-Pro that year as well. Through the first 32 games of his career, he's accumulated 26 sacks and 147 tackles, and has made what is traditionally a sketchy Dallas defense into the team's calling card. Parsons has meant more to Dallas than any player since Tony Romo, and honestly, he is the main reason that people are actually starting to take the Cowboys seriously again. Needless to say, Parsons has quickly become one of Jerry's favorites. Closing out the subsection of defensive players that have turned their team around, this list would be utterly incomplete without mentioned Rams defensive tackle Aaron Donald, who, in addition to building what is essentially an indisputably top five career for a defensive player, single-handedly brought the Rams back to relevancy. Now, bear with me, because this one dates back a while. I mean, when the Rams took Donald back in 2014, they still called St. Louis their home. And though they caught some flack at the time for taking the relatively undersized pit product 13th overall, I think that three defensive player of the years later, it's safe to say that they made a pretty solid investment. The man has been a pro bowler every year he's been in the league, and an all pro every year he started a full season. Not to mention the fact he's eclipsed 20 sacks in 2018 as an interior lineman, which is absolutely insane. Now that he's won a Super Bowl, there's really no box left unchecked on his resume. And as far as I'm concerned, he has completed his destiny. You know, as the man who turned around a floundering Rams organization. Alright, time to shift gears over to the offensive side of the ball. 
How about Justin Jefferson? While wide receivers are undeniably important to the success of an NFL team, particularly as it relates to their ceiling and what they can accomplish come playoff time, it's rare that a wide receiver truly elevates the floor of an organization. But you know, that is exactly what Justin Jefferson has done in Minnesota. I'd say without hesitation that Jefferson is solely responsible for at least four or five of the Vikings' wins this season. And that without him, those easily flip to L's. It seems like every time they need a play in crunch time, Kirk Cousins just starts heaving it up to JJ left, right, and center. There are a lot of talented wide receivers around the league, but what Jefferson means to that offense is different. And frankly, it transcends the offense. What he means to that organization is different. With Justin Jefferson in the fold, the transition from Mike Zimmer to Kevin O'Connell honestly might have all been for naught. Because the security blanket that Jefferson provides Cousins and subsequently the rest of that team completely changes the way that the Vikings can approach the game. Number 18 is integral to everything that the Vikings have become. And without him, who knows where that team would be? They had such a talented core with guys like Dalvin Cook, Adam Thielen, and prior to the Jefferson acquisition, Stefan Diggs. But the team could never get over the hump against better teams. And now, with Jefferson leading the way, the Vikings look like they can't be stopped. If that isn't proof in the proverbial pudding of what JJ has meant to that franchise and city, then I don't know what is. The only other wide receiver with a comparable impact on his team is Tyreek Hill. People have always appreciated Hill's talent, there is no denying that. But before he joined the Dolphins, there are always whispers about how much of his success should be attributed to Hill versus his output simply being a byproduct of Andy Reid's offensive system. And of course, being on the receiving end of Patrick Mahomes' passes. Which, to play devil's advocate, is a pretty fair question to posit. This year has proven that Casey's offense hasn't missed a beat following Hill's departure. But you know what? Neither has Hill. And Cheetah has undeniably elevated the Dolphins' offense to a completely different stratosphere than previously thought possible. Just look at the impact he's had on Tua Tagovailoa. During the first few years of his career, people were skeptical as to whether or not Tua was a legitimate starter in the league. And though he's fallen out of it as the season has progressed, he was a legit MVP candidate for most of the 2022 season. And that was unthinkable before Tyreek Hill came to South Beach. And as long as Miami can protect Tua and maintain his long-term health, thanks to Tyreek, it looks like the Finns are finally going in the right direction. Hill's impact is comparable to that of Derrick Henry down in Tennessee. It took a couple of seasons for Henry to climb the depth charts, but you know, once he finally got the lion's share of the carries in 2018, after splitting the load with DeMarco Murray for the first two years of his career, the Titans' entire identity as an organization changed. The team that plays its home games in Music City somehow became feared for its Smash Mouth style of football as it regularly grinded wins out on the strength of Henry's running ability and a solid defensive unit. King Henry also completely unburdens whoever is slotted in at quarterback, all by his ability to occupy a huge percentage of the defense's attention. I mean, we saw the transformation that Ryan Tannehill had thanks to Henry. Turning Tannehill's career around is almost a more impressive feat than what he did for the Titans as a whole. Now, I regret to inform you that we've shifted into the quarterback portion of the program. Though, I will say, we have avoided the trap that the MVP and Heisman have fallen into and kept it to only the top, truly transformative QBs. First up, Joe Burrow. Just think about the Bengals' reputation before Burrow came to town. It was so down in the dumps that people thought Burrow was going to try to enforce his way out of town before since he could even draft him. And Burrow is from Ohio. Now, the Bengals are coming off a Super Bowl appearance and look to be a perennial contender, for as long as Burrow is wearing the black and orange stripes. And this is extremely similar to what Josh Allen has done for the Buffalo Bills. Before Allen emerged as a top quarterback in the league, the Bills were regularly at the bottom of the AFC East, and frankly, the entire NFL. These days, they're a popular Super Bowl pick every year, and free agents actually want to go to Western New York, which might be the most significant testament to any one player on this list's impact on their city. Allen and Burrow deserve all the credit in the world for turning two loser organizations into top-of-the-table teams. And while both still have work to do in terms of getting over the Super Bowl hump, they deserve to be recognized for shifting the balance of power in the NFL and turning around their respective franchises and cities. Last but not least, we have to include the GOAT, Tom Brady. There are very few individuals in the world whose accomplishments speak for themselves in the 
way that number 12s do. The man has countless accolades, including, but not limited to, 15 Pro Bowls, 3 league MVPs, 7 rings, including one at age 43 in his first season following his much scrutinized departure from New England. It would be impossible to publish this video without at least giving a nod to Brady, who turned around not one, but two franchises. And in a dramatic fashion, I might add. Most recently, as I mentioned, it was Tampa Bay. Before Brady came to town, the Bucks were perennial losers. So much so that most laughed off the notion that he'd ever even consider going down to Tampa. But he did, and, well, the GOAT delivered as only he can. And of course, before that, it was New England. While this generation of NFL fans may still think of the Patriots as the bullies on the block, before Brady, the Pats were just another middling NFL franchise. They had only made it to two Super Bowls, and were promptly dispatched from both in embarrassing fashion. Tom Brady? Yeah, he changed all that. But which NFL player do you think most turned a franchise or city around? Was there anyone that we missed? Let us know in the comments section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.